Hey everyone, it's Elton here, Grumpy Git. Um, I realize it's been out over a month since I last posted. Um, and what a month it's been. It's, yeah, it's been a month that um, did have me considering whether van life was really the way forward for me. Um, several things happened, which I'll go into detail about. Um, but if you've not seen the previous video, I'll stick a link up there. You can have a look at my first incident. My first, uh, I had a blowout, um, had some problems with RAC and the insurer, but I'm not going to go into that detail again because it's in the other video for you to go and check out. Um, but since that incident, uh, it's been quite eventful. So, following the blowout, tire blowout, I made my way down to Slough to go and spend a couple of nights with a friend that I haven't seen for some time. Um, as I said, it was only meant to be two or three nights. As it happens, I ended up staying there for just under three weeks. Um, I developed a chest infection, uh, which then led to uh, triggering my asthma, which then meant I had to go on to steroids and antibiotics, the course of antibiotics. And my friend, bless her, wouldn't let me leave until I was 100% fully recovered. So. Uh, yeah, I stayed there for longer than I anticipated. Um, I also then, once I got rid of the cold, I had some weirdness happen, where I was lying in bed in the evening, and my heart decided it was going to run a marathon while my body lay on the bed. Heart rate got o up to over 180, I think it was, at the worst. Um, so I called an ambulance. I <laughs> thought I might be having a heart attack. I've never experienced a heart attack before, so I don't know what to expect or what the symptoms were, but essentially I was experiencing abdominal pain, um, some pain across my chest, and sweating profusely, uh, nauseous. Um, so the ambulance came, took me away, spent the night in A&E, and they did some blood tests, said my heart was absolutely fine, um, and dismissed me. Uh, to this day, I have no idea what happened that night. Uh, it's a bit of a mystery. Um, so yeah, eventually I was fit enough to leave my friend's house uh, with the intention of making my way to Wales. Um, and about 30 or 40 miles from her, and possibly not even that much to be fair, um, my wheel decided to race my van along the motorway. Uh, yeah, the, the very same wheel that the RAC replaced some two and a bit weeks previously, uh, which is mentioned in the previous uh, video, as I say, that very same wheel lost all five wheel nuts and vacated the vehicle. Um, I have to look at the positive side because I came out of it and my dog, myself and the dog, came out of it unscathed. It could have been a lot worse. Um, so essentially, when the, it's my left rear tire that came off, and of it, when it came off, the whole van dropped, as you would expect. And that sudden drop basically meant that the whole vehicle veered to the right. Um, had there been a vehicle on the outside lane next to me, it could have ended very horribly for us. For them and and, and us because i would have basically driven them into the barrier that might have caused me to flip or all kinds of nonsense so i have to be, look at the positive in this that i managed to rescue the vehicle get it under control and bring it to a halt on the hard, hard shoulder um, as a result of that dragging essentially the the chassis um, about I'd say about 150 to 200 meters along the motorway. The shock was completely knackered um, and there was some damage done to the bodywork where the shock actually connects to the chassis. Uh, I then spent, this happened around 10 miles away from uh, another good friend of mine who was very kind enough to say, bring a van to me you know, and stay with me until you can get it sorted and find the garage to do the work. So that's what I did, um, and for the first week and a half, I, I called approximately 15 garages. None were prepared to do the work on my van. 
Um, I'm not entirely sure why they said it was too big, etc. But my van is no bigger than a long wheelbase Sprinter van, for example. And many of these garages proclaimed on their website that they work on commercial vehicles. So uh, it was a bit of a... I, I didn't understand why none of these garages were able to help. Eventually, after a week and a half of phoning around and hassled, one of the garages said, yeah, bring it down to me. We confirmed that on a on a Tuesday to bring it into them the following Monday. Uh, they then called me up on a Thursday afternoon of that week. She said, no, I'm sorry, we can't see it now. We don't have the time, which really wound me up. Um, because I had essentially stopped looking for garages at that point once they, they confirmed that they would be able to look at it for me. Um, you know, which then when they cancelled, uh, put me back on square one essentially and I had to start calling around again. Eventually I found someone in Reading that were willing to work on the vehicle. Um, I then also decided that due, it was due its MOT on the 17th of December. I would go and get it MOT'd at the same time. So it got took it for an MOT it failed which I was expecting because of the shock damage um, but it also failed on the exhaust where there was some corrosion which I was aware of when I bought the van so I was expecting that also um, so the MOT center was unable to do or unwilling to do the work so then I had to find another garage who would do the work to repair it managed to find that without too much hassle um, so I left the van with them they had it for over a week um, took them a little while to get the shock in they replaced the shock they did some welding to where the shock fits to the chassis which had been ground down um, they fitted the new exhaust and they did some work on the handbrake which where the the handbrake cables were coming loose from the chassis on the clamps uh, took it back for the retest MOT retest and has passed thankfully um, one of the things the garage who did the repairs pointed out was that there is some corrosion on the vehicle. Um, to be fair to the MOT center, they did, they, it is an advisory on the MOT. Um, however, it's not bad enough for them to fail it at this point. But now that I know that there's corrosion there, I'm going to get it sorted out sooner rather than later because, you know, once there's corrosion, it just spreads. So I'm going to get that sorted rather uh, sooner rather than later. Um, so got my back my the van back from the garage but it, like as i said just over a week later um moved back into it my mate had been good enough his parents um, had gone to south africa or are still in south africa for a few months so he was good and they were good enough to let me use their room while they were away and i wasn't in possession of my van um otherwise that it, it would be a tricky situation to not have your home for an entire week so something for you to, to think about I guess if you are a full-time van lifer what are your plans should you have an issue with your vehicle that's going to require days of work from a garage um, you know just start thinking about having a plan B know where the garages are that can sort your vehicle out um, in case you could have the same problem as I did where these garages just don't seem keen to work on motorhomes and uh, camper vans um so yeah just do some research know what your plan b is going to be in, in that situation because it, it may never happen and i truly hope it never happens for you but if it does it can be a very big stress and a very big inconvenience fortunately i did have my mate i broke down near his house for one so that's again thank thank you um and secondly you know his parents were going away so which meant i was able to stay in the house with him which was which was great but the day I got the van back from the garage, I moved straight back in it um, and discovered that I had an unwanted guest in the form of a mouse. Um, when I first heard the, the noises, etc. in the van, I wasn't entirely sure if it was a mouse. I, uh, it was either a mouse, a rat or possibly a squirrel, I was thinking. Um, it had eaten its way into most of my dried cupboard food, so my pastas and spaghettis and lentils and things like this. Um, so I went straight onto Amazon and purchased a humane mousetrap, put that in the vehicle the day I got it and that same self, the self same evening I caught him. Um, I, ha I have made a separate video on that and you can go and check that out if you're interested. Um, but again, something to consider 
that I wasn't aware of, or I've never seen any other van lifers talk about, um, is unwanted rodents in your vehicle. Um, as cute as the mouse was, it's just not feasible to let him or her stay in the van, obviously. Um, so yeah, he mainly caught it and released it in the field. Um, and that was that. That that. But it, it's been a rather, you know, this month, in addition to the breakdown and the whole stress that came with that breakdown with the police wanting to seize the vehicle, <coughs> um, excuse me, the illness, the A&E admission, my heart issues, which, you know, as I say, the test showed there were no issues, there were no damage to my heart or anything like that, so they really don't know what it was. It could well have been a panic attack, but apparently the stomach pains aren't typical of, of panic attacks. Um, I'm not susceptible to panic attacks normally. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, I will create another video um, just talking about what you do should you get sick on the road. I don't want to make this video too long by incorporating all these things. Um, but I just felt I wanted to catch you up with why I've been quiet over the past month I've just uh, the stress and hassle of it all trying to find garages trying to figure out where I'm staying etc it just I wasn't in the right headspace to sit down and create videos to be quite honest um, and the fact that I wasn't obviously traveling you know I want I want this channel to be about bringing you what I see as I travel around the country but what I've also realized in this month is that one of the main things one of the main aims for me for this channel is to bring you the realities of being a full-time van lifer so you know i don't want it to be an instagram type scenario where you only see the best bits um because it's not always great you know there are going to be times you have a breakdown there are going to be hassles there are going to be illnesses and sicknesses that you're going to have to deal with you know just as you do well when you live in a house so Moving forward, I'm going to be less um, concerned about how I look because when I was feeling ill, I really didn't want to put myself on camera because I, f I felt terrible and I'm sure I looked terrible and I just didn't want to put that out to the world to be honest. But again, it kind of, you know, I'm not living up to what I said I'd do, which is bring you the reality of it. And really, as sick as I was, I, I should have just been making videos and keeping you up to date. So I will endeavor. To be um, more on the ball with regards to making videos and keeping you up to date and bringing you the realities of that life. So I am now. It's now the 24th of December. I've made my way down to Southampton, where I will be spending the festive season with my sister and her family. And then in the new year, I will be looking to move along the east. Uh, sorry, south. Uh, west coastline so Devon, Dorset etc <coughs> making my way across into Wales where I'm going to go and look at a few houses with the option to buy something possibly as a base which I'll I'll rent out etc while I continue my travels um, I so I wish you all a very very Merry Christmas to you and your family I know this has been a really tough and crappy year um, I hope that you are with loved ones and that you have a great time and eat yourself silly. Um, and I shall see you in the new year, guys and girls. Cheers then. Bye-bye.